I'm going to click record straight away. We won't waste time. You all right? Can't I'll hear me. You. Can you hear me? No, I'm saying, can you hear me? Yeah. That's why I said hello. You. All right. You all right? <laughs> Living the dream, mate, are you? Do you like my big bottle of blue? I don't know what it is, but it's a, yeah, got a lovely big bottle. Tell you who has a lovely big bottle, Grimsby Town. <laughs> are we? <laughs> this is if we write this shit. We do write this shit, and it's usually shit. Right, back in a sec. Open wide for some soccer! And now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1130. Go! At 1130. I don't think I've ever wanted to be on a stand more than my life around there. They're going crazy. Hey, they got fancy here. They've been fish flying about there. There's no tomorrow. What a magnificent piece of football! A really, really good job. You can't make this one like that. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the DN35 podcast preview show, done periodically when we can be asked. Uh, it is me and Mike both adorned with beautiful black hoodies, and I've got a big bottle of blue stuff, which is apparently lemon and raspberry. Um, but that's not what we're yeah, here. Lemon for. stuff's gone blue. I'd be worried about that. Look, well, you know, who doesn't trust a big bl- bright blue day glow drink? Um, we beat tabletop in Gillingham comprehensively never in doubt i'm doing a donald trump thing apparently really big uh never seen a better result best result beautiful ever. result beautiful result beautiful everybody best. says a beautiful result i don't know much about gillingham but i heard they sting and <laughs> consummate professional that's all i can say about it one no win for those of you who don't know where the hell have you been town three games on the bounce now Last time we did that was back in 2019 in the Football League. I know we did it in the conference, but beating Dover doesn't count. Um, however much it felt like it counted. Um, <laughs> and we're, we're there. It's a good start. Grimsby Town have got 17 fit players. We found a new uh, shithouse goalkeeper, much to the delight of everybody. Probably apart from Sam, who has some reason to dislike him, most likely, like he does every keeper. But... Not a bad thing, Mr. McEwen. How was it? McMahon? Well, I don't know. McEwen. I went McEwen then. Sid? He's ghost, does Yeah. <laughs> no, it was good, wasn't it? I mean, um, I think going into this week, looking looking at the two away games, I think we'd all have been happy with two draws and we've come away with maximum points. So it's absolutely fantastic. Um, a, a long way on a Tuesday night with a, with a threadbare squad. And it's not as if we didn't deserve it. It's not as if, it was a fluke. It was a fantastic performance, a typical away performance. Everything about it was great. Um, the terms of how we set up and when we chose to press and how we chose to to play against them sort of negated a lot of what they wanted to do um, and left them being a team that, that just literally wanted to throw balls into the box. That's all I saw from them. Now, I haven't seen enough of Gillingham to know if that's how they play, but um, I, I think we were quite happy with them doing that and we stood up to it really well. I mean, the movement as a as a block forwards and backwards, side to side, just just stopped them doing anything. And for all the, the the pressure and the balls into the box, I don't really recall them having too many clear cut chances, just one uh one cross that came in and, and over the box, but that's about it. And you know, you're thinking of going to the top of the table Gillingham with a squad that's that's quite depleted. And definitely in a transition, you're thinking, oh, here's one where it's a bit of a free hit, so to speak. So absolutely delighted. I think the team, the players, the manager, the coaching staff deserve full credit. What they've done over the last couple of games has definitely shown us that we're a team improving. Um, and it sort of changes the conversation around from, um, you know, are we actually better than last year to how much better than last year are we? Um, I said on social media, I think it was... Um, it was difficult or it felt harsh to single anybody out because I think one to 11, everybody was outstanding really. But 
special mention to the two centre halves and Evan Corey. I think they were fantastic. I don't know what you thought, but I, I thought McJanet and Rogers dealt with everything, shook themselves in front of everything, and Corey just game after game. Oh, like fine. A... I was I was shaking my head in derision because I assumed you were going into some far melodrama, and I wasn't I wasn't here for that. Beautiful man. Beautiful man. He's not getting back in the squad, is he? He's not getting back in the team. He's going to have to get used to sitting on the bench. Looking beautiful. Looking beautiful, not helping us out in defence. But it'd be interesting, actually, because I thought he'd have gone with three at the back yesterday or on Tuesday. But um, all in all, it's a really, um, yeah, really great performance. Loved it. I think that one time when they had that chance was the only time they beat their, our press when they got around the back of us and, you know, could have gone in but didn't. Um, Gillingham, you know, it's one of these things at the moment where teams, you know, teams haven't found their form yet. We're only nine games in. Um, and you do feel at the moment, given the adversity that the club are having to go through, 17-man squad, 800 miles in four days, you know, there must be a, a hell of a cohesion. And all you can hope is when these players are coming back from injury, it's like bang, new signing, bang, new signing, bang, new signing. And hopefully, because they'll come in in dribs and drabs almost, that might even work in our advantage because it's not a vast swathe of players returning and we lose that cohesion that we've found in the last few games. Now. Every game has been slightly different. Um, we were the better team at Carlisle, I think, especially towards the end of the game and in the second half. Uh, Gillingham, uh, we took our one chance and we took it beautifully. I mean, I want to talk about the goal. It was, um, you know, I can't remember, was it something like 20 odd passes, you know, between it, taking our time, finding the chance. Denver Hoot Hume seems completely and utterly different to what he was before. That confidence he has now to just step inside and, you know, Blundell Park's going to stand on its feet every time he steps inside now because they're looking for that pass that's going to cut everybody out, aren't they? Yeah, as soon as he steps inside uh, inside the midfield, it'll be the, the the go on shout when you when you threw on goal. Everybody thinking um thinking too. But it's an interesting point about the injuries coming back. I mean, you look around the squad and I, I'm wondering there's a lot of players that are going to have to work their way back into that team. Even Thompson and players like that, you're going to think, well, you, there's people in possession of a shirt that are doing really really well. Um, and I know we've spoken before about substitution sort of killing us off a little bit, not making impacts. But over the last two games, they've changed the game on Saturday and they've continued the the momentum on Tuesday and really affects it. You know, Cam Gardner coming on and chasing everything down, chucking himself in front of things. Raquel Pike coming on and getting a, a booking within 30 seconds, which I is mean, hilarious. That, that did feel a little bit old town. It's like, what do you mean he's booked? He's not even on yet, is he? <laughs> But he did give us a, a bit more physicality to to combat them with. So he was holding the ball up quite well. You know, he didn't do anything, didn't score, didn't, didn't get any shots off. But he was holding the ball up, giving us an outlet, slowing things down, which is what you need to do away from home. Um, and one thing I, I did notice at, at kickoff, we've been to Gillingham a few times, and that stand behind the, the, the goal where their home fans are gets bloody loud, doesn't it, when they're chucking stuff into the box. They did it last season. And it was a really good... Uh, decision with, I presume it was Danny Rose, to change them um, to to go that way the first half. And I know teams like to attack the home end second half, but you don't always see them turn around. And you can just imagine that second half when they're chucking stuff into the box and that getting that momentum, that could have been enough to to get them over the line to get that equaliser. So it's these little these little 1% chances that they call them. I don't like the phrase, but, um, you know, that that are helping us at the minute. So hopefully they continue. A crude advantage or whatever they call it, isn't it? I can't remember mm. what they call it. Uh, but uh, I'm just I'm just really happy. And I hope everyone else is. I hope everyone's enjoying it. Um, you know, what I didn't like seeing was people then. And one thing I see, and I don't know why I'm just going, let's just be friends. I'm going to mute you, Mike, because I, all I can hear you is banging stuff. Uh, is, um, is the second we win well, you do see a few people coming. Well, I hope the Artel people who have been shouting Artel out are quiet. And then when town lose, they go, well, I hope those who are on the, it's just, can we all just enjoy it? Let's all be friends. Let's, we've all been through some serious shit together. There isn't a football club on the planet who has suffered like us in the last 20 years. So when the going is good, can we please all embrace one another? Let's pack Blundell Park. Me and Mike will be massive hypocrites here saying, get to Blundell Park. We're playing some of the best football we have in years. We're on a roll. We've got a chance to beat a local rival we haven't beaten for a while. We're not going to be there. 
uh, because we don't care enough. But you guys can care enough and you can be there. And as a man who drove back from Leeds, yes, there and back to Leeds in the day yesterday, I'm not doing that again. So um, please go along. It's an opportunity at the moment. When do we get this chance to have town? Who was it was saying that this is one of the highest positions town has been for ages? I think someone um, someone tweeted it from Gillingham saying this is the highest we'd been in since um, 2006. Yeah, Paul Hurst left because he left yeah. us in the playoffs, didn't he, the first time? And then someone said that I think Paul Hurst left us when we were in a similar position. But we were six in the table if it wasn't for Fleetwood getting a, a point. We're four points off automatic promotion. Who would have thought it? And with the problems that we've had and with the, you know, the injuries we've had and uh, the difficult run. We were all talking about this before the start of the season. The run we have, I'm going to mute you again, Mike. Uh, is <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. Are you tapping it? <laughs> he's getting nervous. Um, he's getting excited. He's just banging his banging the desk. He's uh, the difficult run we've had, and we were all talking about freshly relegated teams ready to try and prove a point. Teams who struggled and were playoff contenders last season in League Two. Teams that have just come up and we've got you know. The, the, the dander between their legs and are pushing on. So much that we've taken those on. And those sort of mid-table teams are expecting the Warsaws, the Crews, the Harrogates and everyone else like that. The teams, the Morecams and Nacrintons who are struggling, we haven't played them yet. And we've got an opportunity. It will be absolutely bang on town that we will go on a winless run and never beat them. And then we'll find ourselves lower mid-table again playing those teams. But the opportunity is there. So I hope you can all get down to Blundell Park. Cheer on it. It looks like it's going to be a sellout. Uh, Mike is back. Sorry, Mike. No, that's all right. Um, I, I think I might be one of those, you know, um, you're saying about the Artel out people. I put, uh, oh, on Twitter, I put, uh, oh, yeah, Artel's probably safe for another week now, isn't he? Um, but, but it's interesting what you're saying. I don't Let's know be friends. Still... Let's all be <laughs> friends. We've all we're been still... through stuff and we've all dealt with this incredibly crap journey we've been on for 20 years in different ways. We've got a good chance. Let's have a hug. Let's everyone. See, if you see Bob Graves at the at the at the at Blunder Park this weekend, give him a hug. He'll love a hug. <laughs> We've seen some things. You weren't there, and um, but it's it's interesting. You know, we we've spoken a bit this early season about are we better than last year and how do we define that? And we look at points, we look at performances, and uh, I remember I, I remember talking to Pete when we did the space um, on tran it was either transfer deadline day or. or or what have you and we was chatting about some of the places we go and we know we think it's a free hit so i worked out or came to a conclusion over the weekend that i think i know why we're better you know we're not the finished article of course we're not but i genuinely believe we will compete with every team in this division we won't win them all of course we won't but every single game we go into i'm pretty confident we can look at that and say "Gilling them away yeah we can get something they're not a problem how we get away all these types of teams and i think that's the difference because for too long um, in the in the league, at least, too much of our season has been. Oh, we won't get anything there. It's a free hit, you know. We'll wait for the home games, and we've got a good run coming up. We'll see what we can take from these. Well, maybe, just maybe, we're a sort of team now that perhaps I don't think we'll go on a 10, 15 game unbeaten run. I think we can beat anybody, whether that's home or away. And I think that's how we can show that we're a different team to last year. Because I've not felt that in the league for a long, long time. Let's do a bit of a shit sandwich, though. So we've had a bit of, no, we've got to have a little bit of Grimsby in us. We'll we'll do a little bit of the negative, what could go wrong, and then we'll do, we'll finish on a positive. Then Daniel Pearson from Don Donny's going to come on, give us a, a review of what's happening down at the shitter part of the M180, and tell us exactly what's going on that down there. Oh, Mike's getting upset because he hold on, hold on. That's not what's wrong. Well, it is the shitter part of it, yeah, because Grimsby is better, but it's not a shit place. What 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 isn't a shit place though? What what, do, what why what's wrong? What's so good about it? Well, it's sort of I'm I'm from between Donny and Rotherham, so it's sort of like where I'm from, so it's not a shit hole. Roll men going down hills in bathtubs and you know, Nora Batty smashing her mattress out in the in the front garden, that sort of stuff, is it? Everybody knows yeah, everyone's name. I love the way you play this to Bruce when actually this is this is my childhood, this. <laughs> Get sent out with a jam sandwich and go run, wrap round the hills with the with the wellies on. Unbelievable! I don't know what to say. You're a, you're one of us, Mike. Yorkshire's a shithole. Get on with it. It's the <laughs> only good thing about Doncaster is it means you're one train journey back away from being home. 
South Yorkshire's all right. The rest of it's a shit hole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Town, you know, 15 points, 35 points off safety, Mike. We've got a chance of avoiding the drop this season. 35 25. points to go. 35, isn't it? 50 points. Take 50. I always thought, I always thought it was 40 points we went for. You so. people from South Yorkshire don't have an education. What are you doing maths lessons? You just count how many bricks of coal you've got and add them together. <laughs> And then you make one big bit of coal. How many uh, whippets do you have? None. I had to eat them. Anyway. Um, none of them all. Uh, no, we're not doing him anymore. He's dead. Um, <laughs> um, I'm just... What could go wrong? Could let's, let's go through all of them. How can we combat them? One thing, lots of players coming back. Bit of disharmony because they're rejoining. Breaks it up a little bit possible i wouldn't imagine so and you know we've got who have we got to come back then mike we've got davies john uh thompson eastwood who else has got to come back we've got Wright, right we've got vernon we've got luca and biqui who should be i'll be you know no inside track but listening to our tells interview should be in and around the squad now they they seem to be back in training and stuff um yeah so that's that's who you've got so at least three three of those, you'd think they're first team players if you was putting it down on a piece of paper at the start of the season. Um, I think only Vernon at the minute would be one that could go back straight into the side. I think everybody else has got to either earn their right or somebody drop off. And that's the problem we, we might have is whilst it's going well at the minute, the lack of options, if somebody starts dropping off or somebody gets a bit fatigued or we have one or two more injuries, then you start to really get into trouble. Um, and the, whilst the, the bench has been good the last two games, we've said before that we've flagged at the end of a match. And I think that's largely be, largely because of the options we have coming off. We don't have, if we had Thompson on the bench on Tuesday, you're thinking, well, we're bringing Thompson on, he'll shore it up and do a job. At the minute, you've got Ainley. And whilst he, he has a role, his role wouldn't be to come on and shore a midfielder, would it? So you've got all these sorts of uh, things that, that, that could go wrong. But whilst it's going right, who cares? We have to talk about it. This is the whole point. Shit sandwich. We need content. Well. Shitness. We, yeah, exactly. You can't just... Man City's podcast must be awful. You just come on and go, Oh, oh again. we won again. Yeah, I want Ireland good. Yeah. We're we going to talk about those 130 charges. No, not at the moment. We'll uh, we'll leave that. I, I do feel sorry for Man City. I, I, they're the worst team I've ever watched to play football. I know they play well and they win everything, but they're so boring. So I'd hate to be on their podcast. What my, my thought process is, and I have respect for Pep Guardiola, but I would rather watch a man have his head blown off than watch a man be suffocated to death. And I think that's the style of play yeah. we're talking about. <laughs> is that about that's right? Or is it, it is man like watching Man City is like watching a man being crushed by a boa constrictor. I would much prefer to watch a man go off a go off a cliff edge and the car explode halfway up and then you know fall to its floor. That's far more entertaining. And that's why I watch like watching Grisby Town because it is more equivalent of watching a car fly off a cliff and exploding. <laughs> so Delma in Louise think, style. I'll exactly. Be Delma, you, you'd be Louise. Right. We've done our negativity. I can see Dapper from Doncaster Rovers is in the green room. So we've got about five minutes or so. Let's talk positively. Let's, you know, shit them up a bit and talk about why Grimsby Town are, you know, on their way to League One. The dizzying heights of Division Three football. Um, what what really impressed you, Mike, at, at Gillingham? Can I say I I've not been the biggest of advocates, but I thought Evan Corey was immense on Tuesday night. I thought he was so positive, strong. One tackle where he laid Lapsley into the um into the corner was beautiful. Exactly the sort of tackle you'd hope for to see in Division Four football. What what did you enjoy? Um, I just enjoyed the work rate of it as well, coupled with that, the ability to still put in a performance that was a typical away performance, but also play nice stuff. I mean, the goal we scored, you couldn't get anywhere near them. And there was a couple of occasions like that, just really comfortable in possession of the ball, kept kept possession well, and then knew how to knew how to um how to use it in the first half. And I think teams teams that come to Bundle Park and want to get on the front foot are going to be having a bit of a a bit of a a tug of war with us because I think we'll love that. So if Donny wants to come and start, you know, getting on the front foot, getting at us, I think our team will love that. 
But Evan Corey, for me, has been an absolute standout. He just looks better and better every single game he plays. David Artel said that Kieran Green looked like a man who lost it, got out of breath eating his breakfast. Uh, but... Look, looks tired having breakfast, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was born looking that, tired. Yeah, that. But that finish when you got when he took that ball in his stride and he got it out from his feet, that first touch was perfect. You know, helped by the the pass that Hugh made for him. Um, I didn't worry. I thought he was going to tuck it away. And it, when you look at it from a different angle, it's it's quite a hard angle to get it from. Yeah, that's really weird because I, I thought the same. You know, somebody's going through and going, you think, oh, shit, here we go. But there's some <laughs> no, no, unknown reason. Can we, can like... we stop that? A Groomsby player is going through one-on-one -on, -one on goal and we're thinking, God, they're going to have a goal kick in a second and we're going to have to get back and defend this pretty sharpish. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, when he went through, I just, in the back of my mind, I think, yeah, this this is one. Now, I don't know if he just looked more confident on the ball. Uh, and Artel has said that they've been trying to work on his finishing because they're playing him in that more advanced midfield role. He is getting into positions. Um, so his finishing's improved. Now, obviously, he's not, he, he's never going to be, and we've discussed this a lot, he's never going to be a player that that dictates play, gets the ball moving and, and, and can play off somebody and in that sort of way. But I tell you what, we've seen it the last couple of games. If he gets the ball and gets half a turn on somebody, you're not stopping him. He's such a powerful runner. And if we can combine that with getting him in the good positions and in being able to improve his, his finishing, like, like he looks like he is, then he's turning into a bit of a player. Yeah, absolutely right. Shall we start talking about the game ahead? Why not? There we go. We can go back to, if we lose to Doncaster, what we'll do is we'll just talk about the Gillingham game on Tuesday. Yeah. But before that, we're going to go to Carl Bo the referee, Carl Boyson's favourite football club. It certainly was after that fucking abominable performance he put on in the early 2000s. Harry Clifton's second favourite home, um, a place that none, none of us care about unless we have to train, change, uh, uh, change uh, trains at. But their one redeeming feature they hate Scunthorpe and find their position as hilarious as we do. So we can all at least laugh at little old Scunny losing to whatever under eight team that they played. And I am proper stalling. Nunny Tavern. Nunny Tavern. Drawing in Nunny Tavern. They're a difficult team. You you know, you've got to have your wits about you when it comes. I still can't. Gotta watch out for that dog shit on the pitch. So that's the final. From the terrible side of the uh, M180, the part which isn't covered in concrete and you can actually drive along it while still listening to the radio, Dapper joins us with a, a shirt with a badge that looks awfully too close to a Lincoln City um, emblem from, from my squinting eyes. But at least it's better than the one that you had. Was it in that season, that awful season you guys had when it was just a drawn-on badge that was your... Um... Yeah, we've had a few of those, but this one's from <laughs> 1988, so it's a bit of a retro one. <laughs> Good. Well, I, we can't fit in the 1988 ones. They didn't do them in those. So they, they, the British population was slightly thinner than it was now. <laughs> <laughs> so how thing, how are things going up in Donnyland? Um, Harry Clifton has joined you. How has he settled in? That's, you know, that's all we really care about. He's settled in very well. He looks decent, to be fair. He's he's got two goals, one assist um, to start the season off. So yeah, it's, he'll have a third it's, it's on a Saturday. Return. Yeah, obviously <laughs> he he got sent off at MK Dons for for poor, two poor. Well, I think the second one wasn't a yellow. The first one was, um, and they were in quick quick succession. It was like third minute and tenth minute, and then and, and then we're down to ten men. But he's uh, certainly repaid. The, the faith by getting the winner on on Tuesday night not not so great on Saturday we'll uh, we'll skirt over that one against Chesterfield but Tuesday night against Barrow it was it was much better. Where are you guys playing him? Because one of the problems I think he's always had at at, um, at town was that he was very much a utility player where he could play pretty well in a lot of different positions and was never allowed to cement a, a, a particular place. Where is he playing for you guys? Um, it's it's floating a little bit to be fair. He's um just just behind Billy Sharp or, or Joe Ironside, kind of sitting in that kind of hole between the uh, the defensive midfielders and, and the striker, and it's just finding like little pockets of space. So I, I really like what I've seen seen from him this first couple of games. I might I thought I was we were we were usually sameless with this. I assumed you were going to come in and ask 
that for a question. I was waiting for you to finish the the Harry Harry Clifton loving before I ask more about Donny. But oh, I'm not going to love him because he's going to score on Saturday. We all know he is. And Billy Sharp, <laughs> Billy Sharp will score as well, just to give Scunny fans a little bit of. I mean, do you not feel dirty having a, a former Scunny player in the team? Is it does it not hurt a little bit? Um, not not particularly no, because there's, there's good memories <laughs> of Billy Sharp from, from when we were in the championship and it, it came on loan. Then uh, it's it's been around a bit in Yorkshire, hasn't he? He's been. Leeds, Sheffield United, um, and then and then Donny obviously, and 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 then Scunthorpe. So it, it's nice to have him back. I think, although he's what thirty eight years old, um, I think he's thirty eight. Yeah, thir- thirty eight years old. Um, he, he's still doing bits. I mean, he's he's got four goals this season already, and I think at this level, you you look at some strikers like Sharp. Um, you've got oh, his his name escapes me. Um, McGoldrick at, at Notts County. They've, they've kind of been there, done it. They've got the experience. And I think a lot of the younger players can really pull on that. And I think that's what, what Billy adds to, adds to our squad. But yeah, I think we'll we'll forgive him his past clubs for now. I, I think Bruce has just joined us. Uh, I assume the pub is shut. Um, and um, Bruce, can we get Kev to announce the Scunny score if they're losing over the Tannoy mid-game? Because I think it would all we'd all enjoy it. Who have Scunny got on Saturday? Or do you mean in general? Oh, I don't know. Discovery's under 11s, I think, or something like that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know who they've got. The BBC website don't, don't go that far. I don't think they're... Are they really relevant these days? I don't really know that they are. <laughs> they are... Look, if the police want to... If the if for some reason it gets spicy, and Donny Grimsby games don't really, but, you know, if they could just at least at some point, just to calm it down, they could even start their own stand up if you hate Scunthorpe chant, or you know, they could at least tell us what the score was, uh, and then everyone will be you know unified. It'll be like that Michael Jackson song when they're all holding hands and you know singing. Oh, the Earth, Earth song. song. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, holding hands around Blunder Park. <laughs> shall, I, shall I drag oh. us back to a question? <laughs> oh, here, here we go. So the, 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 the one that the one that brings it back. With his deadly football seriousness. Football. And apparently my personality is the man that doesn't shave. <laughs> That's all they had. <laughs> so, Daniel, you know, um, how's it, what's, what sort of expectations for you guys and how's it going this season? I mean, we looked at last season and you, you look up and you're around the relegation zone and all of a sudden, bang, you're in the playoffs. Now, I've got a few family members that are Donny fans and I think you had a lot of injuries last year. Looking into this season, do you think it's a playoff automatic promotion sort of team and, and how's that? that bearing bearing into fruition um yeah we we did have a lot of injuries at the start of last season um it, it meant that we were we were playing young kids for 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 large parts of, of the start of the season um rotating the squad as much as we possibly could um but i think i think the key for me last season was the january transfer window getting adelaide in low to tyler and uh matty craig i think he was instrumental in, in in the middle of the park and we just went on that incredible run and it always felt like that run was that run was there a bit of consistency if we got that squad together um and it ended up coming we, we fell short in the end um and i'm i'm glad to be honest i think a lot of donny fans would, would agree with me i think if we'd have gone up this season or last season uh, and been in league 1 this season i think it'd have been a little bit too early so to have another summer we we grab McCann there and and to build the squad Around Luke Molyneux, bringing Billy Sharp in, Harry Clifton, um, Joe Sabara, Jordan Gibson, he's added quality to to the depth of the squad that we've got. And ultimately, straight after we got beat in the in the playoff semi final, Grant McCann came out and said that if players weren't going to come back and want to win the league, he didn't want them. And and for me, that gave me a lot of hope and expectation this season. I think anything less than top three, it'll be disappointing. Um, I think top seven's more than achievable. So anything outside of playoffs, I think it's an absolute disaster. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully top three. Um, I'm not really bothered about winning the league. I think it's just those top three places for me. Either one of those. Um, I hate the playoffs. It's a lottery. But if that's what you've got to go through, then I'd, I'd take that as well because a playoff win is quite nice as well. I like that. We're not bothered about the top three. We'll just take the promotion. That's fine. Yeah. Do you yeah. know it's nice to hear? It's nice to hear. We sort of so humble, so humble. <laughs> we, we sort of played you back into form last year, didn't we? As, isn't it after you absolutely battered us? You just went on that run. Yeah, that's where it started. So five one at Bundle Park, and then I think we went on eleven wins on the bounce, and and just absolute catapulted ourselves up up the table. So I think for me, 
I just want to see consistency this season, not not so much like last year. We we had a dreadful start. We gave the full league pretty much a three month head start, and then and then started playing. Um, and I think it was because the squad was was coming back together. The injuries had gone. Um, so yeah, if if we're con- if we're consistent this season, I think there's no reason we shouldn't we shouldn't be up there. I think the quality of the division is probably less than what it was last year. You look at some of the teams that were in the division last year, um, but without trying to sound too disrespectful, although the quality has dropped, I think that'll make it a much more exciting division. I think it'll be a lot closer and there won't be like a runaway leader or I don't think anybody will get relegated until the last maybe one or two games. Accrington look a bit dodgy. Other than them, though, I think yeah. it's relatively close. I think... Um... The easiest way to say it is there's still a bit knocking about, but a lot of the money's gone out of the league this year, hasn't it? With yeah. Stockport and Wrexham getting up, and Mansfield as well, that spent a lot of money. So there's the, it's a little bit more of an even playing field, even though you still have quite a few teams that have probably got bigger budgets than teams like ourselves. But um, a lot of the money's gone. Yeah. We've got a uh, Donny fan. Thank you, Kieran the... Maguire. <laughs> I'll do stocks got... and shares later. Oh, we might let us know when you're going to start that, and I'll leave. Um, we've got um, I'm starting we've it got, now. I'm starting it now. We've got a Donny fan at one of our uh, one of our schools that we look after, and all oh, last summer, last season, just you wait, Bruce. Just you wait. When we get all our team fit, we'll be flat. I told you, didn't I? I told you. I told you. We're, we're flying now. We're af- we're absolutely flying. End of the season. I'll see you next week. I'll see you next season in League Two. <laughs> He was he was just like he was he was unbearable while you were on that run, and then and then oh well at the end of the day you might as well have been as shit as we were because you're still in the same league. <laughs> I think they probably had a little bit more fun at the game we played at Blundell Park, Bruce. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Well, I'm fed up of hearing from that from my from my aunties and uncles about that. Jesus Christ! And and and, and Daniel, I do have to thank the 1800 of you for coming as well. It was real. I don't know about you, Mike, but that was impressive. You, don't you think so, Bruce? No. Do you think they're gonna? Do you think they're gonna it's thank tw- them for coming this time? It's twelve. It's twelve hundred. We only give them twelve hundred now. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're being all tight. Where's your phone going? Uh, yeah, sorry, oh, yeah, Daniel. I've got it plugged uh, in on Bruce's, the top of a book. Bruce's. You don't have a book. Uh, Bruce's. Uh, <laughs> Bruce's bugbear is the uh, Atano announcement thanking the away fans for coming and enjoying their evening, as <laughs> as as at Sheffield people. Wednesday. Yeah, I've got, Sheffield I've Wednesday got scored their fourth. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll tell you, mate, it, it's absolute shambles. Every game, every game. The, no, you've can got hardly, power. You're an influential ind- individual now. They've stopped doing it. They can hard, I, well, Previously, right, the backstory is we'd like to thank the 724 that have come from Mansfield and they'd be, they'd be mid-celebrate. Thank you for coming. We hope you've enjoyed your day and you have a nice journey home. And they'd be mid celebrating their fourth goal going in, and it's like, no, we're not having that. Anyway, books. I've got Mike's new book. Oh, because Mike's got bought a caravan, not some sort of derogatory your caravan? thing for the travelling no, community. Your... No, who do you think caravan? you are, Elliot Whitehouse? What's going on? <laughs> uh, Elliot, he's, he's, he's broken his leg. No, that, no, someone feels broken his leg, hasn't he? Yeah, well, there's lots of shit midfielders we used to have that have been injured. A bit disrespectful. What One thing it? I I was going to ask is about the the away tickets, Daniel. Um, we've only given you twelve hundred. I saw a little bit on social media about a little bit of um annoyance that we'd only given you twelve hundred. Um, yeah. Do that, you think you would have brought more? I th- I think we would have. Yeah. So we've we've introduced a like a, a point system. So for every for every game you go to, so it's the league table. Maximum. Yeah, and it's like so. A season ticket, I think that gets you twenty five points. So twenty three games, and then they give you a couple of extra extra bonus points. Um, so the higher higher the points are, you you get first first dibs on tickets. Um, and I think we've travelled really well this season. I mean, I don't think there's been an away game where we've we've not sold the allocation out. Um, so yeah, I think I think there's a there's a market for for selling more tickets. It's the home attendance that, that lets us down sometimes. Um. Everyone seems to prefer the away games. Because I'll never forget the. I think when we got back into football league, when we first time we played away at Donny, and we sold, I think was it four thousand in the away end. Yeah, and, and we lost, obviously, of course we did. Um, we couldn't but, see because of the sun. Yeah, but the sun was, but when the I was, sun there, was, I was really like, in our eyes that day. 
the, the staging wasn't very full. So, you know, that's the first time, first and last time I've been there. So t- when I saw that, I was like, oh, really? You've got that many? But have things picked up quite a bit since then. Yeah, so we normally average at around 6,000 home fans. Um, but away, we, we tend to we tend to travel really well for, for, for the size of our club. And and like I say, the, the average attendance is at home. We seem to prefer the, the journeys away. I'm, I'm not not quite sure why, to be honest. It's um it's a problem we have as well. Uh but it's um because last time we played there as well, Bruce, didn't they restrict our capacity as well? They only gave us three thousand rather than the four and a half or so we had the time before that. I can't remember, mate. We've 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 had we've, 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 not that it matters. We've had, a, we've, we've had a mixed bag of results at Donny, haven't we? Because we um like you say, we lost one on that first game in twenty sixteen or whenever it was, seventeen, something like that. But then we came from behind to win a couple of years ago. And I'm sure, I'm sure we've won two out of the last three or something at Donny. Um, I think uh, was somebody on, one of the lads on loan scored. George Lloyd scored there, I think, um, when he was on loan. But yeah, it's, uh, it's it, it, what's it like? At, as a, I know we're talking about the game at Bundle Park, but as an away fan, your ground sort of, there's that pub next to next to the ground, like a sort of, Brewers Fair type place, but apart yeah. from that, it's quite a long way from the town centre for for drinking and traditional football fair, isn't it? You're all right if you want to go shopping at at the at the outlet, but apart from that, it's uh, it's really just a stadium in a car park, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I think that I think you get that with any any stadium that's kind of situated outside of the town. I think in terms of like transport links and stuff, it's it's pretty good. It's straight off the straight off the motorway, but. Like you say, for for people coming in off, off the train, it's I think it's about a three three and a half mile walk from from the town centre. Um, there there is bus bus links down to it, but I mean there's there's a couple of pubs around the lake, but the like, like you say the main the main ones the uh, the beef eater or we've got the uh, Bellevue Bar which is just underneath the West Stand. Um, but we are we are trying to improve match day experience and and get more people there. I mean the food this year if you if you come to to the away game at, at the Eco Power you'll I recommend just bring a decent amount of money because you'll want to try a little bit of everything off the menu. It's it's unreal. It's very good. <laughs> what do you call the ground? Football tapas. What, yeah. what do you guys? Yeah, little bits of everything. <laughs> Football tapas. My God, they're just thinking you're just going to throw that at players. Um, what do you what do you guys call that ground? Then is it got a? Um, is it key, it's currently key sponsored key by Eco Power, um, which I like. A yeah, but what do you thing. call it? What do you call it? Um, it's still the key mode for us, to be fair, because yeah. it, when it was built, it was like I think it was the Doncaster Community Stadium for a little bit, and then it went to it was sponsored by by Keep Mo Homes, and then it's been that for pretty much I think it's fifteen years. So that that's just stuck. It, it's still the Keep Mo, but I think the naming rights are up for grabs at the minute, so it it will be getting called something else shortly. Oh, the DN thirty five Stadium. <laughs> Don't do that. I feel I feel when Doncaster are on, I feel small because we've got to use their. We've got to use their um, <laughs> their postcode. <laughs> just um, just looking ahead to Saturday, then Daniel. Um, not seeing a lot of Doncaster. What what should we be looking out for? How do you sort of guys like to play? Players we need to be watching out for. What what do you think? Um, you guys will want to come to Blundell Park and do. How are you set up? Well, it worries me a little bit because I was listening to what you were saying before uh, before I came on, and you said about teams getting in, getting it down and playing and. And kind of, you guys will enjoy that, and and that's what that's what we try to do. We try and get it down. There's there's a high press. Um, we've got Molyneux on one wing, um, Gibson on the other, supporting a lone striker, three in midfield generally, and four at the back. Um, he has mixed it up a little bit. So when we went down to ten men against Chesterfield last Saturday, he switched it to three at the back, five in midfield, and two up front to try and get back into the game. So there is a couple of dimensions to our to our game, and we do try to kind of. Just look at look at what the opposition do and try and find them weaknesses and and, and exploit them. So I, I think we'll set up as as we normally do with four at the back, five in midfield, um, and, and one up top. And yeah, like I say, just try and press high. But it, it does leave us a little susceptible for for breaks and set pieces. We've not been great at those. So I was looking um, a couple of days ago. I think we've got the worst defensive record in the top ten at the minute. And it's generally from set pieces and just being caught out a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think we'll try and play. But like I say, we've we've, we've just got we're a little bit open at the back. It'd be nice to get a clean sheet on uh, on Tuesday night. It's been a long time I mean, coming. 
I think you've scored 12 and let in 12, haven't you? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're scoring as well. Um, I mean, Molyneux's got five, Billy, Billy's got four. Got goals coming from from other areas as well. I know you guys have got got goals coming from everywhere at the minute as well. Um, so yeah, we are we are scoring, but I think sometimes we we're a Grant McCann team. It's like we'll concede and we don't mind conceding because we'll score one more than you. At the minute, it, we, we're not quite. It's not quite clicking to to really be free flowing and, and and score lots of goals every game. So yeah, we've been we've been in quite a few tight games. Nil nil then. Yeah. Nil nil Saturday. <laughs> We don't do draws. It's not a thing we do at the moment. Leanne's getting well annoyed. She's trying to make a little scarf with different, like white is a good uh, a win, black is a loss, and red is a draw. She hasn't been able to get the wool out yet. She's disappointed. <laughs> we did think it'd be a Lincoln City scarf, didn't we? We did, yeah. We will just uh, loss, loss, draw, loss, draw. <laughs> we could, we give it to da- if it looks like that. We'll give it to Daniel. <laughs> we haven't we haven't had a draw yet, so I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty confident it's going to be nil nil now, isn't it? No, nah, it's got we'll to be 1-1. It... One, one. Harry Clifton's got a score, hasn't he? We'll give it to Sam. Give the scarf to Sam. He doesn't win at anything he seems to do at the minute. No, that's true. Why is, is it? Hang on. Has it been actually announced that Tugan Hart has lost? I don't know. I just... I just Mike? It doesn't need to be announced. I, thought, I, thought, I think everybody knows. I thought, I, I, thought I'd, I thought I'd pick on Sam. Bless that's him. fine. You can do that. I just If it was, I'd have put, put some like bumping music out to celebrate. Again. <laughs> he should. He needs to come back on the pod at some point. Um, yeah, Daniel. Where you say you know there are opportunities in the back. Where are your weaknesses? You know, if we, if you were set, helping us set up to to defeat you, what would you? Apart from trying to emotionally blackmail Harry Clifton, what what else should we be doing? Um, I think Sterry at right back has has looked a little shaky in games. Um, there's there's been a few times where he's allowed that he's allowed a cross to get in, and then the strikers managed to nip in front of Jay McGraw or Tom Anderson at the back. Um, so yeah, I think if if you focus attacks down the left hand side, you, you'll probably get a bit of joy down there. Let's do that then. This we find out it's completely the reverse, and uh, <laughs> it's the left side we should be concentrating on. Um, what? In terms of where Doncaster are now, where do you think you guys have bounced around the leagues a bit like we have, but you know more recently, I guess. Where do you think you you guys really sit in the pantheon of clubs? Where is where is Doncaster's level? Where would you feel comfortable across the EFL? Do you mean? Yeah, 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 and um, not like not Champions League. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think reasonably probably pushing playoffs in League One. I think that's kind of where we like mid table to upper mid table in League One. I think that's probably where I'd expect to see to see us as a, as a club. Um, I look at some of the teams in and around that area, and I'd say we're, we're, we're similar size in terms of fan base, um, finances, just everything as a club kind of set up as a whole. Um, I think Grimsby are, are, are below where I'd expect to see you guys. I put you in kind of a similar sort of area to to that. Um, so yeah, mid, mid to higher highest part of the table in League One, I'd say. Can I? Uh, there's a thing that happens with Grimsby fans a lot where we talk about training facilities, and Grimsby Town is in the arse end of nowhere. So um, you will, you will not believe the amount of conversations we've uh, that have been had that saying we should put our training ground in Doncaster and just do it there. Is do you guys ever complain about location or anything like that? Is it a is it a good thing for you where you guys are based? It'd be interesting to get your opinion on it. I think I think the worst thing for us is the teams that sit around us and kind of our our more more recent history that that I remember when when I was a kid at school, there were my mates have Leeds shirts, Chef Wednesday shirts. There, there were very few Donny Rover shirts, and I think we've missed kind of a, a generation of fans because of how it was going on the pitch. Um, but at the same time, how successful big clubs around us in South Yorkshire were and then you've still you've still got Leeds are doing well Chef United are up there um, Chef Wednesday are in the Championship you've got Rotherham who are not performing particularly well this season but they've been kind of bouncing between League One and the Championship yeah, yeah. Barnsley have been fairly consistent as well so we, we end up losing so many kind of fans to, to the more more successful teams at the minute but then your big games come along you look at you look at the playoffs and 
and the stadium was full. Um, when we played Everton at home last year, I know it's a, a Premiership team coming down, but the stadium was full. So I think if if we can build on that success from last season and, and push on, I think I think there is a I think there is a desire for for people to come and, and watch the club, but they just need something a bit more to to really convince them because the last four or five years it's not been it's not been great. We've been moving backwards. Um, and we've just started to turn it around a little bit. So hopefully it'll, we'll start to see more bums coming on seats if we if we continue kind of going up. Do you think it puts a different pressure on that that the um you know that there is a bit more expectation that you know if you if you don't go up this year, is there a const- I know it's really early in the season and it's probably a shit question, but is there a you know, is there a danger that one or two of your players sort of get snapped up and move higher up the leagues and You've only got uh, you've only got a chance or two to do this. Yeah, I think I think you're spot on. To be fair, I think this is the season that we've got to do it. And if we don't, I think we I think we're looking at a, a pretty big big rebuild over the summer. I think Luke Molyneux will go. Owen Bailey's fantastic. He played every game last season. Um, he's doing well this season. Um, I think Joe Ironside would probably leave. Billy Sharp would probably leave. He'd probably call it a day. So you, you've got. The, pretty much the spine of the team you'd have to you'd have to replace. So I think I think it's important that we do get that success this season. But like I say, that added expectation it, it adds that pressure, doesn't it? And we've seen that in a couple of games where that expectation of a win um, it's probably come over them a little bit. I mean, we were two 0 up against Crew coming into the second leg, threw that away. Um, we we're going into the game on Saturday favourites, and we just didn't turn up in front of a big expecting crowd again so yeah I don't know if um, if there's a mentality thing that, that makes them crumble a little bit I'm, I'm not sure but hopefully Grant McCann gets to the bottom of that and we do have a successful season but only time will tell So you've tr- you've tried playing with 11 men you've tried playing with 10 men and 9 men <laughs> Saturday, Saturday, is Saturday 8? Um, hopefully we'll keep the full 11 on um, it didn't help last Saturday because we were playing against 13 or 14 men so yeah when we went down to 9 we were never going <laughs> never going to get anything Bruce I made a I made a point of it earlier what are your thoughts on Carl Boyson um, is he the guy from Wembley that didn't no he's, off, um... he's the guy from the Donny Rovers game the Hall fan when it was at Bellevue Oh, when he sent off um, Marcel Cass and um, was it uh, Des Hamilton? Yeah, that was a that was a balmy night. That was, and it was a autumn. Did you go? I think I did. Yeah, but it was a long time. Yeah, it I was. I don't remember out of it. Yeah, it was. What was it about? Two thousand and two, three? No, two thousand and three. Wasn't it? Two thousand and three, four. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was a bit of a crazy night. It was a old school. Open terrace, wasn't it? And the ref was, yeah, bent. Yeah, cheating little bastard. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what you get from a Hall fan. Uh, okay, perfect. Great. Any questions for Daniel before we let him go? And he can go and keep painting his uh, mural of Harry Clifton, um, as everybody does. Polish the, polish the League Two trophy. <laughs> polish the League Two <laughs> Yeah, keep it warm. We're going for it, apparently. <laughs> It'll be like when it like be when we got to the FA Cup quarter final by mistake. <laughs> How do we get into League One? Uh, brilliant, Daniel. Thank you so much for jo- joining us. Enjoy the game. Nice to have a proper derby. And as always, Scunny are really shit. <laughs> Bruce, while we let Daniel go, it is the third of October. Is this prime podcast content? We can put it. We will put it up, Mike. Happy to put it up. Um, do you want to do your calendar now? As a no, uh, as a, no, no. It's Sunday. It's sun. It's Sunday. They can't. You can't chuck it in now. Why not? It's it's the third. No, play your calendars right. This is not a full on pod. I, I want a bigger. No, no, it's 
It's Sunday. No, it's it's Thursday. I've got I've got one thing before we go. Okay. It's on Sunday. So <laughs> that's why you've got sorry, Mike. That's why you've got nineteen people in the podcast group that want to come on the show on Sunday. A record a record number of people available because they all want to be in. I they all want to be. They all want to be in. Play your calendars right. You've got six <laughs> that want you. You've got six people available to come on on Sunday because it's play your calendars oh, right. No. I might not. Sorry, Mike, you fire away. You bring it back, Mike. No, just one of our regular regular watchers, Jack Foley, he's just turned 14, watches every single week. Just want to say happy birthday to Jack. He's been watching for a long time. And he'll, um... Jack, you, you're a young young lad. You should be watching things better than us old farts talk about football. Yeah, especially some of, the stuff we, some, of, some of the stuff we talk about. Happy birthday. So happy birthday, Jack. Aren't we supposed to be over 18? What, well, I am. It, spe- it, it, it features explicit You're significantly so over 18. I'm uh, nearly double 18. And shit at maths. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, happy birthday from all of us. Oh, rubbish uh, at maths, Jack, sorry. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like a print from our shop, drop us a quick DM or something, or drop Mike a message and we'll get one sent out to you as well. So, um, have a great birthday. Um, we never talked about the new hero of Blundell Park that is the shit housekeeper we've borrowed from Barnsley for a week. Um, not a bad sign, really. Jackson Love Smith. It. Is that right? Is, yeah, Jackson he's Smith. Got two, he's got two surnames as well, hasn't he? Has he? Why, what are they? He's got three listening to Wally Turner. Oh, kept calling him. Jesus. Jackson, Jackson and Smith, Alex. Look, you know. Oh, what a shambles. This is not play your calendar. This is not play your calendar. Are we sure his name's just not Jack and everyone calls him son? You know, they do that in football, don't they? What's that? We're going to. Jack, son, come here. Come here. Oh, Oh, God. Oh, Oh, God. (laughs) Bruce, how's your week been? Uh, It's gone really quick. I got kicked at football on Monday though, and I've been hobbling around all week. And I'm at, I'm at, a, nine, I'm at a nineties and noughties night on uh, Saturday uh, at Luke Harley's. And Andy Carr's do, and I don't think I'll be throwing my usual dad dancing on the dance floor this time. I might have to sit in a corner quietly and just get pissed. You're doing an eighties and nineties night? No, nineties um, and noughties. Sorry, at, at Luke Harley's. My God, that's going to bring back some memories, isn't it? Bit of bread and dripping. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. He's got. Uh, yeah, it's a good night. It's a good night. They're always good nights. But you get you get dead leather though because, like, you get there about seven, and it's dead easy to get served. And you know, like, you normally spend time moving from pub to pub. You don't have that. You just basically always got a drink in your hand all night till midnight, and it's just it's usually carnage. That's the best bit. But I, but I, w- I won't be able to walk to the bar very well, so I might have to rely on the. Uh, I might have to rely on charity. Who's her, who's she? Um, yeah, hey. good, good point. You sit on Ernie as well in the 80s. You what, mate? Did you sit on Ernie in the 80s as well? Oh, I put the picture on the group, didn't I? She was pretty, wasn't she? The uh, the athlete that I... who's I, I'm, I'm not convinced. You made me doubt myself that we sat on her knee at 12. Um, what but, do you think you sat on? But it was the 90s. I did it's that sort of then. I sat on an elephant. Right, Cleethorpes. I sat on an elephant in the nineties. Don't think you do that nowadays. Why would you not sit on an elephant in the nineties? I don't think you're allowed to now. Have you seen many elephants knocking around North East Lincolnshire? Hang about, right? Actual elephants and pull faces like that at me. I was going to make a. I was going to make a nasty joke. I was going to make a nasty joke about Alex then as well, but I thought better of it because I'm not like. I'm, that. I, I beg your pardon. I'm 17 stone now. I'm going in the right direction. Thank you very much. Only way is up, baby. 17. You can, doing all right. Get, get yourself up here at the weekend, then you can throw. You can throw my my dance moves that I can't make. I can't throw dance moves. It's I'll be throwing. Good. I'll be throwing my sausage rolls in the air. Oh, I'm some might, some might be, Sam might be dancing now at the party. 
must must be an after party, whatever's happened. I think it's probably a wake for Sam, isn't it? Oh, wake does good food though. Went to a uh, went and looked around the Catholic school for Charlie this afternoon. That was weird. Didn't like it. After, afternoon, afternoon. Very sorry. Afternoon. sorry. Have you had to have a it wasn't, it wasn't. through the Catholic? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Good, good yeah. afternoon. They did a Lord's Prayer at the beginning or whatever they did. I was like, oh, what's the fuck? And they did the whole thing. And... You got a good show. Look, love this school. Look, good right. afternoon. Oh, yeah. I have a bar. I do have a barber jacket now. Rah, rah, rah. Can I borrow your you chinos in a check shirt? I did wear chinos, but I didn't wear a check shirt. Fucking knew you so, would. It's a blue shirt. Thank you very much. Blue uh, I, I did shirt. wear a jacket. Uh, I wore my uh, barber jacket. Yeah. Oh, you, <laughs> you, you proper, you proper sorry man. I don't have any sorry music to play. I don't know what it would be. I'm not sure Barber's very appropriate with your uh, character reference of uh, by whoever it was on the oh Ch Chiffy, wasn't it? Bump shame. Yeah, I, I just I I thought I was obnoxious enough to at least have a better personality trait. Then oh, he just doesn't shave. It might be that's the only nice thing he could think about you, Alex. Well, he doesn't need to think about nice things. Me and Chiffy, you know, we've said Hello. things before. We've been we ne sat near each other once at the pontoon during the season, so you know we've had words. <laughs> he can say what he wants. It has uh, an interesting odour. Who, me? You, yeah, that's true. you. Yeah, you. <laughs> I was going to say, Mike's throwing stuff out. Bruce, what have you got planned? Are you looking forward to the Donny game? You've got to get there early. I can't get there early. Maisie's, it, the bloody early kickoff's a nightmare. Maisie's game don't finish till just gone 12. Uh, so, who's Tolbert. been your ticket? I am. Are you going to we'll be late? Be, we'll be, we're going to come home and jump on the bus as quickly as we can. Uh, yeah, I reckon we might be five or ten minutes late, but there'll be, uh, be there'll, there, mate. there'll be a turnstile. Normally, normally we're losing uh, when we uh, when I get there late. I put on. I shared today the game at Barnet in two thousand and nine when we were um, losing by the time we got in the ground. And last time we went to Carlisle before this, um, we were one nil down before we got in the ground at the rugby club. So yeah, I've got a bit of a history of turning up late at games. So I might have to. I don't know. Stay outside till I hear town score and then go in. Three weeks but later, yeah. he's still sat outside. I'm taking some videos tomorrow night to... Um, Alex, you're not Joe, muted, mate. That's why. To the Joe Waters evening that Dave Roberts has organised for the um, disabled supporters. Um, they've got uh, Joe Waters is coming back from America for the game on Saturday and on Friday. So I'm doing some videos on a little memory stick. I've got to make sure that I give Dave the right memory stick. And not one of my normal ones. Um, oh, you put, the, put that mean? in, and you get some of your knockoff stuff on the thing. What, what does that even mean? Because you surely aren't He's watching got some porn. Dodgy porn. You I was aren't watching you, I was, porn. I was and then you put it on a USB out. stick. I was setting you? you up to take. The, I was setting you up to take the pee out of me. Oh well, you are a selfless man. But the idea that you know, Bruce watches porn. Not groundbreaking news. But the idea yeah. then you take, you download <laughs> the rude. porn. You download rude. the porn. And then you move it onto a USB stick. What for? Yeah, but that's a lot of effort. That's a lot internet, of effort for what, what wife, if the internet, What if the internet breaks? I tell you what, Bruce is doing. Yeah, what the happens the internet? Doing? Yeah, the internet's down. Bruce the whole is of the doing. Internet is broken. <laughs> you know, when you were a kid and you found a dodgy magazine in a in a bush somewhere. Bruce is doing the twenty first century equivalent, and he's hiding the USB sticks in the in the hedges for the well, youth of today. It, he could pass as one of those blokes from the 70s and 80s that had the brown trench coat on and had the mucky, you know, the mucky books and things to, to sell you on the street corner. He did say that the phone is le lent on a book, didn't he? Yeah. Penthouse Forum. Maybe it's a mucky book. It's filthy. You won't, you won't, be, surprised. You won't be surprised to see. You won't be surprised to see what book it's lent on. It's is very it? Tatty. Where's it's, your very tatty. Observe it. it's very tatty, look. It's, but it's the Grimsby Town story. Oh, that's a bit uninteresting for you, isn't it? Oh, look at the little tour we got of Bruce's room then for a second. Hey, look, yeah, right. Look, hang on, I'll find some music. There's a wall. This works hang well on. on a podcast. Hang on, there's a wall. Yeah, yeah. Look, there's a DVD. Look, uh, oh. DVD. Me and my sister mixed mixed home video recordings. Bruce and Amy. Uh, there's a. A thing that I got from my grand's house when she died, when we cleared the house out, that I thought might be worth something. 
some sort of old bag writer. Off stuff? No, it's just tap. Stuff? It's just tap. I tell you something, you could you could weld that to a walking stick, and you'd be you'd you'd be slightly nervous when you put a step. I've got a five uh, a note a bank note bank note from Turkey. Um, from how much is that? Five Turkish lira. Uh, five, okay, me, uh, five, five lira. Um, let me find out. I've got a. Uh, what is that from? Oh, bloody, I've got my glasses on. I can't see it. Bruce, would you like to? Would you like to guess how much five Turkish lira is in UK money? I've got a nineteen oh three. Uh, in, in a minute, I've got a nineteen oh three penny coin. Okay. And lots of and lots of coins, but unfortunately, coins are worth bugger all because lots of them were made. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I've That's got an old Grimsby Town work, mug. mate, isn't it? It's got an old Grimsby Town mug. What the... <laughs> what is uh, that? Yeah, so... Uh, oh, and I've got some magic mould. I'm sure you have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, haven't we all? Is this... Is this um, are we just recording or is this live on YouTube? Oh, no, we'll it put it on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. The viewers need to see this. It's not on YouTube now, though, or it is? No, it's no, not, not yet. Now. Not live. Not we can soon. edit it. You know, if something goes wrong. Oh, nothing will go wrong. You just might want to so, get rid of Bruce, my bit at the end. How much? T- how much do you think five Turkish lira is worth in sterling? Uh, one pound forty. No, Mike, you're going. Yeah, go on. Um, three pounds sixty-five. Bruce wins. It's worth eleven p. Hey. Oh bloody hell! I thought my granddad. I thought my granddad left. Right. Unbelievable. Bruce thought he was a millionaire then for a second. I, 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 I took are we still the, recording about, or are we just chatting now? What about just five Indian what about five Indian rupees? Hang on, let me find out. Is Indian it more, rupees. Mike? Hey, play your money right, Mike. Next 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 game did, did, did. How much is there? Did Sorry, did Bruce. Did. Five Indian rupees. That's worth less than eleven <laughs> P. No, it's no, it's <laughs> worth more. more. I'm going higher than eleven P. Okay, right. I'm going lower than eleven P. Lower than 11p. Oh, hang on. First and foremost. <laughs> Play your money. Mike, right. Play your notes. M- Mike wins. It's worth four pence. <laughs> yes. I've had a great day. I've had a great day. You wait, think, till, yeah. you wait till Sunday, Mike. I can't wait. I'll get my teas made that I've won, didn't I? So is that 22p then? Uh, do you want to find out? Well, it's ten lira, so it would be double <laughs> what fives. Were. Fucking hell! You never know. You never know. You never know. I'm pretty confident. That's not always how money works. Yeah, it's twenty-two p. <laughs> That's not how money works. It's a double, double the amount of money. Might be, 20, not always might be twenty-three p. You never know. It I might be. You know. know. <laughs> I don't you think I've got. I don't think I've got <laughs> anything else uninteresting. You know, I go to go to the shop and give them a tenner and ask for change, and they give and they give me four pound fifty back. Oh, it's not how many works. I'm just saying it's not. Yeah, that's not how we're not talking about the great British coin. We're not talking about, you know, what we give Mario, what Manchego cheese or whatever that island is away for free. All right, how much is this one worth? Twenty quid. Oh, it's oh, more right. twenty. It's got a. Uh, it's got the Queen on though. Well, it's still twenty that's quid. It. I mean. what... You it's wish got it that, like that, it's, got that, it's got that young lad. It's got that young lad out of uh, Robin Hood on it as well. Is it who, who? Kevin Costner? Morgan Freeman? Uh, no, <laughs> it's. Uh, I don't know who he is. Anyway, Sorry. this this is this must be shit. We, 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 this is worse this than the end. Is a, no, this, this is, the is a, of, of a normal podcast. For your consideration, award, this is award-winning content. <laughs> But DN thirty five, find out how much five lira is, and then spend ten minutes trying to work out how much ten lira is. <laughs> we'll, we, we, we will be we, we will be we will be the first people ever, Mike, that have been unnominated from the uh, football <laughs> content awards. I'll tell you like, something. We, Alex will go to Alex will put our code in to apply to apply for tickets, and it'll just come back with like laughing emojis. I think they'll take our money. Don't worry, Bruce. <laughs> Can we pay a little yeah. lira? So Bruce has got a lot of it knocking oh, him out. Oh no, I've broken me big. Um, I tell you what, we need to get it sorted actually because it was that it was three hundred tickets available last time I looked. It's down to a hundred now. Oh, I'm sure we'll be fine. 
Anyway, you're the one on the Naren, and whether you want to come or not, you keep going. It's expensive from Grimsby. It is expensive, but I, I think well, I'm I am coming sure. now. You're not sure, but I'm but, staying at your house. I, you can still stay at my house. I'll tell you, I'll tell you offline. Yeah, he's um, promoted. Division yeah. three. Division three promoted eighty nine ninety. Did you see that stat the other day, the other week about at the time when we won yeah. at, when we won yeah, at uh, Gillingham? Yeah, it was great. That was great. Nineteen ninety seven. 97, 98, we won there. I think 79, 80. Uh, yeah, and something else. 71, 72. Okay. So and basically, we're going to get promoted. Where's his music? So we're going to finish second. What we're going to finish second, and Don, we're going to finish second, and Donnie are going to come third. You know, you can't see, you can't see this, listeners, but he's looking around his room now for any more boring shit he can tell us about. Was taking yeah. something off the wall. Hey, look, this me... is me in 1972. When I, do you remember when the, glo- remember when the Glory there? Hunter came? Oh, I do, yeah. yeah the Glory yeah, Hunter. Yeah, Spent, yeah, Spent Sam, him. Sam's we there all the time. Him. Didn't we interview him and then you spent the entire time talking about somebody else's book that was better? Did we? No, I don't think Spencer. I, I don't. I don't think we talked. No, Spencer that Austin. was that was the one. He oh, said this is the book he was referring to, wasn't he? Yeah. So yeah. another guy did it and came, and you spent all yeah. the time saying how good that book was. Yes, he did. The guy's oh, giving okay. up his time, and you said, like... <laughs> "Oh, has Bruce, to, has, this, has this guy asked to come back on?" No, no none, none, none of them do. So I Daniel's the only one, and I'll, I'll, I'll abuse him. I, I had to message Daniel from my account, so he didn't know which podcast it was. <laughs> yeah, he thought it was the other one. Oh, shit, I've got to stick together. <laughs> All right. Are we going right. now? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. This is longer than the normal pod. You yeah. wait till sun- You wait till Sunday. Du, 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 du. I'm Contestants looking forward to row. Ones. Contestants row. Have you got a snazzy jacket? Uh, no, I haven't. Do you own a jacket? But... I might wear my dressing gown again. Now, 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 now I know it's accepted. How, about, how, about, it how much money is that you've got in your hand there? You've Roll the bloody twenties uh, there. Uh, that's forty pound, Mike. That was a roll. There's more than two there. I had a roll of them. I sold a laptop earlier. Three. And, and uh, uh, does the ta- does the tax man know about that? Man. And yeah. then I took the, the no. It was a private. It was a private, <laughs> trans- it was a private transaction between uh, friends and family. And just then... click friends. Just make sure you click friends and family on pay- PayPal, will you? <laughs> Good job, tax man. Don't watch YouTube, innit? Oh, he's... <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> it's getting moved with us now. <laughs> inter- I'll, I'll just have to make sure the internet's broke when they want to watch it. <laughs> that internet, or something. The internet's broke. What bit? All of it. Yeah. That's how it works, Bruce, mate. Yeah. Bruce is Don't trying you to work in IT? Don't you work in IT? Yes. As he holds a vinyl record. Badly. <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed the preview show. Grisby Town, three unbeaten. Hopefully, when we join you again on Sunday, it's four unbeaten. And we're looking at the misty eyes of automatic promotion. Uh, and Bruce will be here to entertain you with calendar entertainment. Why are yes, you holding Mike. a paintbrush? Come on, it's, town. I, I got it in my thing. Right, okay. I've got it in my bag. Of... Do you want to go through it again? I'll go through my screen. No, 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 no. Okay, fine. There's loads of crap in here. Look at it. It's a right mess. <laughs> right, thank you all for joining us. We shall see you all soon. Have a lovely day. Bye. Oh, I am fu- Bye. Open wide for some Bye. Bye. Ruined it now. What's your room? What are we doing? We're in the theme what? tune. What happened? Can we? I thought we can't talk. Open wide for some Hi. Can you talk? Unbelievable. He's worked out how to do it. Open wide for some soccer. And now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1130. Go! Double one three oh. I don't think I've ever wanted to be in a stand more than my life around there. They're going crazy. Yeah, they got fair to hear the fish flying about that. There's no tomorrow. What a magnificent piece of football! A really, really good job. You can't make the strength of that.